Welcome, dear listeners. I'm Jonathan Carlin. And I'm Ben Carlin. And we invite you to join us through the Gryffindor, Door, your one-way ticket to the enchanting world of Harry Potter. So grab your wands, dust off your broomsticks, and join us as we unlock the secrets behind Philosopher's Stone, Chapter 14, Norbert, the Norwegian Ridgeback. Oh, man. Norbert. Norbert. I'm going to get chapter art out of the way first because Dude, it's I great. Agree. This I wrote right next to it. I was like, 10 out of 10. This chapter art slaps, man. It does. It does. It does. And honestly, this is so. So we talked about this a little bit in the last chapter where it's like it feels like it's the wrong title for the chapter. Like like you could have just called it Sorcerer's Stone yeah. or Snape's. What do I call it? Uh, Snape's Snape's some, detour. Snape's detour. Yeah. yeah. Like, like <laughs> it just I, I, I literally I remember ending last week's episode and saying like, yeah, I would just go with Snape's detour. And then I was like, no, Sorcerer's Stone. That was the right answer. I Like we just had a whole conversation about it. And then I like said the wrong name. And so I was like, anyway, <laughs> so I wanted to backtrack from last week's episode and and make that small correction there. But yeah, no, this one, this is like one of those examples of this chapter is like a side quest. It is such a side and quest chapter. It is such a like, like we uh, like there needs to be a reason for Harry to end up in the forest to con- confront Voldemort and talk to Ferenz to tell him that it was Voldemort so that Harry realizes that Quirrell or that Snape is not in it for himself but actually it's way worse than he thought. Yes, yes yeah. exactly. There, there's like a lot of like very work backwardsy kind of writing related things that I think you can observe happening. Like this whole chapter for example is almost like clearly the outline of the whole story had been written and it almost feels like the Norbert chapter was like one big thing that allowed a couple of other things, important vital details to fall where they needed yeah. to fall. Yes. So specifically Malfoy uh, discovering that they're going to be out in Dude, the middle of the night. The, the absolute, this is what, yeah, I kept writing it down in this chapter. Like Malfoy needs to get a life like he is doing he is being such a bother in this chapter he's a plot device more he is than a character such a plot device yeah. in this yeah specifically in this chapter and then at the same time harry ron and hermione are being like more careless than ever like they're so sloppy this chapter <laughs> they are indeed a little uncharacteristically there's another little detail that i'm going to point out that also feels rather uncharacteristic uh, of one of our golden trio members so um w- you know without any further ado we can just dis- we can we can dive in proper to discussion of Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback, yeah, yeah. Um, which again, yeah. So the, the big thing for me is is sort of like coming into this chapter. There's there's a scene where I think Ron is the one in particular who has been going and spending time with Hagrid, uh, specifically like helping him to feed uh, Norbert, yeah. which which lands him with a bite to the hand. And the fact that Ron is there of all people, it's like I feel like in Prisoner of Azkaban we see like Hermione be extremely involved with like. Buckbeak's trial and yes. stuff like that. This, I'm like, it feels odd that it's Ron in particular, but it's almost like in order to find.
locked away for Malfoy to discover where they're going to be and when, you need a situation that would allow Ron to end up in the hospital wing so that Draco could go and make fun of him, borrow the book, and inside of the book is the information that tells them they're going to be out in the middle of the night, all of which needs to happen so that detention can take place in the Forbidden Forest where Forenzi could just give yes. a massive It is so info much. Dump. And it's, yeah. like, it's like the amount, yeah, it's like the amount of like hoops that have to be jumped through for Malfoy to then like it's like he like who even goes up there he like li- like even it doesn't even make sense it's like Malfoy lies about needing to borrow a book but then just takes a book anyway like, yeah, as probably, if like, like to he, follow through on the lie I guess right 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 yeah. like, Ron can just be like no I'm not giving I'm you not my giving book. you a book I'm like why why like, does he like, like Mal- yeah <laughs> Malfoy's like no no I'm doing a bit here okay I lied to get in here so I could come bully you okay you gotta let me take the book do you have a book with it with extremely vital information <laughs> possibly tucked into the pages <laughs> like why would you be keeping it in the book why'd you write it down I like I, well, I guess they'll write it down even even the plan for Charlie like Charlie's plan is like could you meet on top of the tallest tower it's like what they needed to write back was um how about you meet us at hagrid's hut (laughs) like why add this needless complication and then even even then like it baffles me that hagrid lets the three first years handle this for him oh my gosh like he puts the he does all of the wrongdoing here and like harry ron hermione are like dude you got to get rid of this thing and he's like yeah yeah i guess you're right i probably do it is illegal you guys just want to carry it up to the tower for like like (laughs) like, and it ends up just being harry and hermione and they in the middle of the night carrying a dragon have to a Carry. dragon that is apparently big enough that when it swipes its tail inside of Hagrid's yes. butt, the window shakes. Yes, this is a house-shaking sized baby dragon now that the two of them, not even not even three of them, have to get underneath the invisibility cloak, carry it, as far as I'm concerned, up the hill to the castle, yes. and then up to the tallest tower, completely unnoticed by anybody, like at all. And it's like Hagrid why can't Hagrid just carry it up there? Oh, I have you no know? idea. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. what like, why does why why isn't why aren't they like Hagrid great news? We've arranged for Charlie to meet you at the top of the tower. Right, yes. <laughs> yes. Look, here's what we'll do. You can borrow the cloak and put it over the crate. How about that? Then you'll just be taken There's no like it's not suspicious for Hagrid to just be in the castle. In the ca- he's the, he's the he's the keeper of right. keys. Keeper of keys, you know? Like I'm here checking on Fluffy. There you go. Lie accomplished. Yeah, you easy, know What easy. are you doing with a monster? Dumbledore asked me to put this with the stone. Lie. Ac- like, there's so many ways they get over- around this. And it's like that Hagrid ends up with the dragon. And then I guess the dragon, Norbert is also the reason that Quirrell and Voldemort figure out how to get past Fluffy. So that's another big um, plot element at play here, right? That yes. we don't quite know about yet. We don't, but, we don't quite know about yet. But no, I, I, know, oh I literally gosh. there's uh. there's one sentence in particular that I found to just be properly absurd. And uh, yeah. forgive me because it's on the second to last page of the chapter. Sure. Um, but this, so it's exactly as you described. So Harry and Hermione by themselves without Ron, who's in the hospital wings for convenient purposes, so that Draco can get in trouble. Like by themselves, they're going to have to carry this giant dragon, which otherwise, for all intents and purposes, I have to imagine is not happy about being in the. Crate I know. And is actively going to be blowing fire at what, them or what kind of fireproof them. crate do they have here i don't know I don't also know. The, not for nothing ron gets bit on the hand when we know for a fact that one of the requirements for being a first year is uh dragon. gloves dragon hide glove or similar or it's similar like, like yeah. you absolutely have dragon hide gloves and if ever there was an occasion to be wearing them especially because Hagrid will go on to be the def- not the defense of the art- dark arts teacher the um care of magical, magical creatures. creatures teacher it's yeah. like come on Hagrid you're like almost a professor here like you, you need to be guiding Ron on because that's the thing about Hagrid too that I feel like is underdone in this particular chapter it's like Hagrid actually is good and tender with animals yeah. and creatures and beasts and stuff like that. And this is like one of those where it's like, Hagrid, how are you being so blinded by all of this type of stuff oh. that you're making such bad decisions? Also, also like, like Ron's down there. He like, like Ron is down there helping Hagrid feed the dragon. It's like, why does he need help? What is Ron doing? That Hagrid can't do by himself. Jay, he's he's administering the the proper blend of brandy and chicken blood. <laughs> the, 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 
<laughs> okay, we're uh, this this chapter is so absurd. It's the, I don't like. It is the most absurd chapter in the whole book I, by far. Jay, I haven't even gotten to my, my <laughs> highlighted did, line here, which I, is this sentence is the most absurd sentence yeah, in yeah. the most absurd I'm sorry. chapter. Go ahead. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Again, Harry and Hermione carrying a dragon up to the tallest tower from Hagrid's hut. This is the quote. How they managed to get the crate back up to the castle, they never knew. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, mm. They me, never knew. Yeah. <laughs> they, the ones who did it yeah. never knew it's, how they did it. It's some, uh, like, and um, they did it. So next, <laughs> yeah, it's just like it, it quite literally is one of these things where it's like I don't even know how. I don't even begin. I don't know how to explain how they did. Like they, the they, fact, just, they just did the it. fact you know, that they like, don't even know how they did it. The right. fact is, it's like there's no way these two eleven year olds carried a house dragon up to the castle. That's the thing. Like, they carry it too when they're like the one signature known spell we know they could do is make stuff float. Yes, you know? yes, yeah. Well, Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Look, everyone, Miss Crane just done it. It actually, like, it feels like a level in a video game, quite frankly, which is that you, you, the character, have the crate covered in the invisibility cloak, so nobody can see what you're moving. So you have to Wingardium Leviosa, the crate, lift it in the air, and then you're walking through the halls of Hogwarts and having to get past, like, other students and Filch, and, like, occasionally, like, the dragon will breathe fire, and you have to make sure you're not near anybody during that, like, Right. It feels like a, like a game where it's sort of like, okay, set the dragon down for a second, wait for Peeves to pass. Okay, dragons back up, lift and continue. Yeah. I mean, 1,000%, this level exists in the Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone computer game for Windows 95. Is this, like, in fact, a, a, a task? Uh, Am I, mean, I just it describing is a, a real thing? It is a real thing. I'm not sure about the, like, moving the crate around or anything, but, like, there is the level where you're under the invisibility cloak and have to avoid, like, Filch and Peeves and Mrs. Norris and take some roundabout way through the castle and, okay. like, you know, do like the spy game, like wait for them to turn around and sneak past. And sure, because even sure. though you're invisible, of course, they can see you with lanterns and stuff. Right, right. You know, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm very much imagining I played a lot of Breath of the Wild and yeah. there, there's like one ability that you that you link have to like pick up uh, objects and sort of like swiggle them around while you're do, like, do, doing the puzzles and yeah. stuff like that. So that's very much what I'm picturing is sort yeah. of like the weird kind of uh, like like video game joystick mechanics that are required to sort of use both both joysticks at the same time to sort of navigate the up, down, left, right, moving forward back type right of positioning and stuff like that yeah i could totally see it yeah. i could totally yeah. see it so anyway um yeah from there we, we've mostly covered norbert so we've far. mostly yeah, covered norbert yeah, yeah we yeah. haven't I'm like normally we just sort of like go down the the paragraphs and talk about stuff we highlighted so we can we can try and do that i can't promise i'm not going to get sidetracked again I but um <laughs> so the, one of the things i found interesting on the first page that they're concerned that like quarrel is going to crack and give snape the information he needs to steal the stone but um and so as a result they start being like extra nice to Quirrell, which I think is so funny. It says, whenever Harry passed Quirrell these days, he gave him an encouraging sort of smile, and Ron had started telling people off for laughing at Quirrell's stutter. And it's like, it's so funny because like they're sort of defending Voldemort without knowing it. I know. I know. I know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit hilarious that they've like, they've taken the bait, hook, line, and sinker, yeah. and it's, it, this is, I mean, it goes back to that conversation between Snape and Quirrell in the woods where, where it's just so like... The Snape could have just said so many other words that would have made his allegiance any clearer. Yes. And instead, it's just so muddled to the point where quite literally they're talking to the actual culprit involved <laughs> yeah. and they walk away thinking he's the victim. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. The, I saw just a fantastic TikTok the other day about like how Sirius Black is the worst communicator ever. Okay. Like, how, like the TikTok was saying that people complain that Sirius didn't get a fair trial and whatever and it's like it doesn't matter because there's no way that Sirius goes to trial and answers the questions adequately like uh, it's like D were you the Potter's secret keeper it's like I may as well have been <laughs> you know? it's like no just say no. the answer was no <laughs> no no no, no, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right <laughs> did you kill those people lock me up I would have died for my friends it's like Sorry. okay um, uh, I heard yes but but they but they died where, yeah. where do we land on your position yeah yeah <laughs> I may as well have killed them. It's like, could you just say... Be less cryptic. Be less cryptic. Yeah, be less cryptic. And they like desperately need them. They absolutely do. Like even yes, the even that. the judges, like there's that the seated order of the Phoenix where like they don't even know like what the rules are. They're like, wait, 
Wait, can Squib see Dementors? Do we know about this? We'll check that later. We're going to dole out some justice right now. <laughs> right now, yeah. yeah. I was like, we'll, we'll remember it for next time. Yeah. We'll be sure yeah, it's about like, what actually happened. Good thing happened. Dumbledore showed up to point out all those loopholes, which is just basically any like all the loopholes, which are super obvious yes. to everyone reading, Yeah, much less someone, you know, uh, trained in magical law. Anyway, not the, the way, point. Not the a, point. We get all it, of Dumbledore's five names, though. So there's yes, that. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, so uh, th- yeah, they're defending um, whatever Voldemort there, which is kind of funny because they just don't get it. Um, I think there's a line here that says, you realize they're talking, they're worried about um, studying for exams, and Hermione says, you realize we need to pass these exams to get into the second year. And it's like, that is interesting because every description you ever get of Crab and Goyle is that they are like about as smart as a bag of socks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're giving them too much credit. I know. I know. <laughs> but they advance not just past first year, but every year. Every year. Every, every single year, year they pass what? and manage to get to the next year. Like these exams are either like, like just way easier than Hermione he like let would ever let you believe. Or Crab and Goyle are not given enough credit. Oh yes, I mean, at bare minimum, by the time Half Blood Prince rolls around, they should be fourth years. Yes, like, right. You know, it's just like there's there's, there's no right, way right. that they pass their OWLs. Yeah. Um, no, I know this is this is like one of those things where it's like like they the, the Crab and Goyle are painted as so inexplicably incompetent. Like even from like Malfoy's perspective, it seems like they are nothing more than just like brute strength. Yeah. You know, but it's like it's like they must be a little bit more capable they than anybody's must be. ever telling us. Like I or or else all I can imagine is that like the day before the exams, Snape comes into the common room and is like, Crab Goyle, other students who don't know what they're doing, here are literally the answers to yeah. the quests. Okay. You're going to have to make a pineapple tap dance. Here's the incantation. Crab, do it. Right, good. Just point to the wand and say this. Good, that'll pass. That's good. You know? <laughs> it, it jiggled a bit. It jiggled a bit. You're good. You'll make it to next year. Um, no, the thing I wanted to bring up because I feel like I brought this up a couple of times earlier on in the series. Um, but the, the the I actually highlighted the exact same sentence that you just said. So you realize we need to pass these exams to get in the second year. Uh, they're very important. I, sh- I should have started studying a month ago. Um, this once again, I think, is actually the. This is well done because this is like the reverberations of how bad life is with the Dursleys that I feel like over and over again, this idea of like expulsion or failing out or not being able to return to Hogwarts is constantly this like otherwise threat yeah. that is that is like facing Harry. Right. And, and you're like, like, I can't have Harry go back and live with the Dursleys. Right. Like, like you, the reader, it's like, this is like a multi-book series. Surely he keeps going back to school. But yeah. like the, the constant like worry or concern, because it'll even take place literally in Chamber of Secrets as we get into like the next year with like crashing into the Whomping Willow where it's like, there we go. We're, we're on a one-way ticket. That's it. Again. Harry is, con- yeah, you're right. The threat of expulsion is, feels like it's always about like three inches away from Harry. Yes, yeah. It's like he, he like flirts with the line way, way, way too much. But the reason that you're so so concerned for him is because of the life you would have to go back to if yeah. you were kicked out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do think like as far as establishing like life with the Dursleys as being so much worse than anything Harry, I mean, <laughs> Harry's facing death at school sometimes, but somehow it still feels like going back and living with them seems worse. Yes, it kind of, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just straight up abusive. Uh, what I think is interesting is that apparently one of the things they need to study for the first year exams is what are the 12 uses of dragon's blood? Yes. Which yes. seems to me like if you'd been learning about that throughout the year, because probably it wasn't like one day. Here's all twelve uses. Right. Feels like today we're covering use number one or whatever. Right. Um. Anyway, I, but, I follow your logic. Yeah, yeah. you follow yeah. my logic, yeah. right? Yeah. That's the, that's really how it goes. It feels like that might have sparked some memory from the chocolate frog card, which also mentions Dumbledore's fantastic discovery of the twelve uses of dragon's blood. You're absolutely correct. <clears throat> yes. Do you have the twelve uses? Well, so that was what I was wondering. I was like, you know what? They constantly like um reference quote, this, yeah, yeah reference that there are twelve, and I'm like, I don't think they ever say what they are in the books. And indeed, uh, at at best. There is one confirmed use in the books, um, if not like maybe like one in, uh, you know, one quarter. 
Okay. Um, but like, oh, but it almost feels like more of an. I'll go through them. Um, okay. I look. I looked this up. There are three apparent known named uses. Okay. Um, but none of them are in the books. Two of them are like in interviews. One with the author. One with the um who had screenwriter, who'd, screenwriter for, Steve yeah. Clove. Yeah. And then one with was like um God, I can't even remember the last one. But not, none of them are like official. Is official one of them things. oven cleaner? One of them was oven cleaner. Okay, that's one of yes. the ones I. I feel like I knew that one. But which honestly, so it says spot remover, a cure for veruca, and the twelfth use was as an oven cleaner, which also seems like spot remover. It <laughs> kind of does. Me. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it seems like for this to be one of Dumbledore's like chief accolades, it seems like a lot of what it's doing is is sort of like cleaning solution. Cleaning solution. Yeah. Now that said, in Order of the Phoenix. Um, after Hagrid comes back from, or not, not come, yeah, after he comes back from the Giants, they go to his hut and he's holding up a bloody dragon stake to his face to yeah. help deal with the wounds. So the fact that it is a bloody dragon stake kind of makes it sound like one of the uses of dragon's blood might be to like help with swelling on wounds like a salve yeah like a salve or something okay, like that okay so yeah, that's that. there and then the only other time we actually see it be used to any effectiveness is when slughorn uses it to um disguise the room he's destroyed as if someone has been horribly <laughs> bloody murdered yeah which which th that's so. kind of a curious thing too because it makes you wonder whether or not and we're jumping way ahead yes we point, are but um it makes you wonder whether or not dragon's blood has similar properties to human blood for oh. some reason <laughs> i know um, but i love like, the idea that one of the 12 uses of dragon's blood is as fake human blood yes, <laughs> yes looks yes, like yes. other blood looks like other blood like hard, hard to discern from <laughs> other kinds of blood this is one of the uses <laughs> right right Right. It's not like, magical use in any way. Right, right, right. Yeah, and then it always does make you feel a little bit bad because I think I think Slughorn's blood gets a little dusty in the in the cleanup there. Oh you know? yeah, oh, right. That's just too bad. Oh, got dust all in my blood. The, got dusty blood. You got oh, dusty blood. Dear. Not so pure blood now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. Um, there you go. thank you, um, thank do you, you feel like there's <clears throat> any like foreshadowing or anything? I mean, the fact that we get dragon's blood of all things, uh, we haven't really heard reference to the twelve uses ever since the chocolate frog card, um, specifically to the tune of this being a very dragon centric chapter i know you'd think like oh well, maybe they can use the blood or something but maybe um, maybe it's just to be nope. like hey hey dragons are a thing in this world as, hey, a, as a gentle reminder that is like, sort of the thing they kind of like point out that there are um in fact wild dragons in uh great britain and common welsh greens and hebridian blacks aka hogwarts castle former shape yes this is like one of those things where i refuse to go and read the comments on the video that we made where we suggested that hogwarts castle was was a previous uh gigantic <coughs> hebridian black yeah. hiding in the the foothills of scotland yes um because i don't want to see people contesting it <laughs> which, I, <laughs> which i feel like they probably are we just need um, like t-shirts or something for this show that because this is where we came up with that theory it was on the show. I know, yeah, on the fly because on the of the fly. Capit Draconis. Capit the Draconis, head dragon, yeah, head yeah. of the dragon, and then the the Hogwarts motto. So we just need, we just need shirts that just said like Hogwarts was a dragon. Hogwarts was a dragon. Yeah, and it's I like know, if you yeah. know, you know, you know. Right. Yeah. Oh yep. my yep. gosh. Yes. No, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I also highlighted speaking of dragons, all of the various books that Hagrid that Hagrid checks out of the <laughs> library, which includes Dragon Species of Great Britain and Ireland, uh, From Egg to Inferno, A Dragon Keeper's Guide, um, which is three different books, but that I, I, this is like uh, one of those trivia questions where it's like, which of these books did Hagrid not check out? You know, right. during during uh, Harry's first year when when tending to Norbert. Um, apparently, it's inside of these books where he uh, learns enough information to know that they again require that that healthy blend of brandy and um, chicken blood, yeah. which is a kind of those are the books he did not check out. Oh, you're right. You're right. right. Yeah. the ones that he didn't check out. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, no, let's see here. Um, what is the name of the book he actually ends up getting? Gosh, I, uh, we just read it. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit later, I think, because oh, they okay. haven't quite gotten there. It's Dragon Breeding for Pleasure and Profit. For Pleasure and Profit. Yeah, that's go. the one yeah. he landed on. Yeah. For okay. Pleasure and... So does that mean... That almost sounds like he was planning on selling Norbert. Unless it was just for fun. For pleasure for, and profit. For, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, he could be excluding the for profit mm. part. I mean, he ends up giving it away. So sure. for for freezies, <clears throat> mm -hmm. for freezies, <laughs> I know. Like, come on, dude, um, at least sell it to these Romanians. Right. Also, on the note of dragon bre uh, on on dragons and on the note of dragon breeding in particular, it's again Ron who sort of uncharacteristically uh, has a, a like a little dragon factoid to drop on us because it feels like a Hermione quote that is just like then given to Ron, but it says, but it's against our laws, said 
Ron. Dragon breeding was outlawed by, outlawed by the Warlocks Convention of 1709. It does seem like it seems like later on in the story, it would he would say maybe something to that effect, but he'd be like, it was outlawed by outlawed by the Warlocks Convention of 1709 or something or whatever. You know, like he would like have like a like a little misnomer there at the end. Like I don't really know the exact date, but like it's 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 known. It's known. It's known. Th- this one actually, I think, kind of stood out to me a little bit too, because um, as has two individuals who would love at some point in time to be involved with writing lore that goes much further back in the Wizarding World. Yeah. Uh, you know timeline the thing that that stands out to me is like like if the warlocks convention of 1709 is such common knowledge that ron is able to drop it in this sort of like secondhand regard like just sort of like like yes of course like this thing like it almost to me reads sort of like oh like america gained independence on july 4th 1776 like yeah like it's a it's a quote that like anybody who has lived in the country would know this information like right it's it's iconic and important yeah. enough like what how what else happened at this warlock convention well what else happened or else how how big or important were dragons to wizarding culture prior to 1709 that's true to where this was like a really big deal yeah so they like, were probably huge like castle sized or something like almost castle sized. <laughs> I, know, I mean like, like you you literally almost have to wonder if at some point in time like dragons were were like almost um like maybe maybe like some people were successfully taming them in some capacity in a similar uh like vein to like Voldemort attempting to get like the giants or the acromantula right you know on his side well like, there almost must have been because like there are these books about it true like, according true. to ron you can't tame them but like there must have been enough success to at least write the books i wonder if that is why inside of inside of the st- like when haggard is talking about it he specifically says like books are a bit outdated you know which of course they would be if he's reading a book about right if it's been outlawed since 1709 it's, we're like, talking it must two, be at least that old yeah like like almost 300 years wow like you so- know It's impressive that it's still around. It is very impressive that it's still around. Yeah. So yeah. that's 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 kind of interesting. All right. I'll give. Okay. That's it. That's pretty. I like that headcanon that the book he checks out is 300 years old. Because yeah, otherwise it's like just the very act of printing this book is like like promoting illegal activity. Yeah. Okay. So the exact line says, got this out of the library, dragon breeding for pleasure and profit. It's a bit out of date, of course, but it's all in here. Like, yeah. Of course it's out. Well, it, it's not even that it's any less accurate than it was when it was written. It's just the book is extremely old. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but before, before we get there though, um, yeah. So where we go on down to um, Hagrid's hut where it's stifling hot inside yep. mm-hmm. uh, for such a warm day, um, Hagrid made them tea and offered them stoke sandwiches yep. which they refused did you look up stoat sandwiches i looked up what stoats were yeah they're like a weasel they're like yeah they're like little ferrets or well, something yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's like uh, apparently these were quite in vogue at some point in time but they are they are like uh some version of like rodent sandwiches is sort of like right like what i mean the, that's sort of what i gleaned from it anyway contextually you picked up you you understood stoat to be yeah some like, sort of like yes like vermin <laughs> Wow, I'm yeah. genuinely impressed. I that was like I was like, what is a stoat sandwich? Well, like, just because like Hagrid, like Hagrid almost like famously always serves them bad food. He does. <laughs> and so it's sort like, of like, yeah, of course, yeah, I got stoat sandwiches. The the thing is, there is this weird recurring thing in this chapter specifically where one, like, where is Hagrid getting all the stoats for these sandwiches? Right. But then yeah. like later in the chapter, it is revealed that what you're supposed to be feeding Norbert is a bucket o brandy mixed with chicken blood every half hour and then later when he gets bigger he is eating rats by the crate and I'm like first like like that the idea is hilarious to me it's like where because it means that he's feeding him rats by the crate which means Hagrid has a way of getting many crates of dead rats (laughs) 
Where is he getting the crates of dead rats? Maybe he's trapping for them out in the Forbidden Forest. I mean, forest. but he'd have to be trapping so many rats. Uh, well, yeah, this is true. This is true. I don't know. I, I, honestly, this is like also one of those- the chicken blood. It's not like it, the way this said is that there's feathers everywhere, which makes it sound like Hagrid is harvesting the chicken blood himself. He's not like purchasing bottled chicken blood ahead of time. Yeah, like, no, that's my yeah. interpretation Okay, as well. right, yeah. yeah. He's, he's getting Hagrid's the chicken almost blood. certainly, yeah, taking out some chickens in the yeah. process. I yeah. mean, <laughs> how many chickens... How many chickens are going down for Norbert? I don't know. I <laughs> because don't know. what's funny is that the very next year, Hagrid's also bursting in and he's like, someone's been killing my roosters. And I'm like, wow, you know what? Given your activ- your own activity last year, I'm not. I'm kind of thinking maybe it's you. Yeah, you yeah, know, yep, no. or uh, <laughs> like you got another dragon down there, dude. This, this, it feels, it feels like Hagrid. Hagrid, stick with me now. It might be you. Last year, you murdered no less than like fifty chickens to feed to your illegal dragon. Okay, yeah, yeah. like not for nothing, but there's a giant creature <laughs> said to be roaming the school, and now there's a bunch of dead chickens again. So you were caught last time too. <laughs> This is this is one of those things. So I we I feel like we were we were chatting with some other friends uh, recently who are you know fans of the series and everything. And I was expressing my own personal love for Hagrid. And I felt like there were a lot of people that almost sort of were like, "You want to play like Metallica?" The best way to play like us is to play. I yeah, I don't. I, are you sure you like Hagrid? And I was like, of course I like Hagrid. He's like the best. He's so great. Yeah. And I feel like as I was reading this chapter, I was like, okay, so Hagrid has his faults. <laughs> 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 there, yeah, there, there, there are occasionally some moments. There's some moments. Well, like there's this, there's this, like, uh, so they're, they're what they're doing down that Hagrid's hut to begin with. They're not actually there for the dragon egg. He's just like asked them to come talk to him about the sorcerer stone down there instead of in the library. True, 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 true. And like Hermione, the 11 year old uh, whiz kid over here, just like wheedles information out of him like that. Basically, right away, like at the end of the at the end of this page, like it says, not a soul knows except me and Dumbledore said Hagrid proudly. And Harry says, well, that's something, you know, like he's like, I I guess that's good enough. Like uh, Hagrid would never tell anyone else something that he wasn't supposed to as if he didn't just reveal all sorts of information to the three of them at like the simplest prodding by Hermione ever. Yes, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know? I mean, Hermione, yeah, says Hermione in a warm, flattering voice. Um, like, yeah. So it, it is. It is kind of interesting that like Hagrid must be so infrequently on the receiving end of such glowing admiration sure you know that he he's sort of like he can't quite help but just sort of eat I up the guess moment. i'll tell you who's guarding the stone um once again when it kind of comes back to uh dumbledore's big plan there's there's always that sentiment that like you know dumbledore of course trusts hagrid above all else and this is one of those things where it's like this might be one of those situations where dumbledore just knows hagrid so through and through that he trusts that hagrid will mess up in the exact way that he wants him to <laughs> so, that, so that harry will learn what he needs to know right about yeah. how to uh, I trust Hagrid will mess up <laughs> yeah I, yes yes that's what I mean by I trust Hagrid it's like yeah. I know exactly what Hagrid is always going to do right. always right uh, and it works out well in my favor I will okay go ahead yeah. oh I was gonna say before before we get to the line that you just mentioned there though we do get a line because we talked about this a little bit in last week's episode about whether or not Snape might know all of the other obstacles yes that's exactly what I was gonna say okay perfect yeah so Hagrid says number one I don't know myself number two uh you know too much already I wouldn't tell you if I could the stone's here for a reason it was almost stolen out of Gringotts. Um, So that sort of suggests to me because Hagrid is also one of the professors uh, well, I guess he's not a professor. Not a professor yeah, yeah, he, he's one of staff who is involved with protecting the stone. And right. He doesn't know what the other teachers did. Right. So I, I think it does stand to reason that the conversation that that Snape was having with Quirrell that what he, the information it seems like he's trying to get out that kind of like hocus pocus line uh-huh. is some version of like how do I get past your your exactly challenge? Yeah. Yes. I also his next sentence is beats me how you even know about Fluffy and I'm like well that part's pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? How do you know? We opened the wrong door. <laughs> it's like, how else do you guess yeah. three-headed dog? Yeah, right? <laughs> right. Anyway. Okay, so the bucket of brandy <clears throat> thing I thought was kind of interesting because the other thing that comes up eventually is that when Madame Maxine arrives in Goblet of Fire, her does she have a Braxen? Is that what pulls her carriage? I want to say it is a Braxen, yeah. Okay. Well, what, what, 
is it? Man, now my brain is like, I feel like it's reaching for some other name and I can't remember what it is. Um, large winged horses. Large winged horses, indeed. And they eat, or they only drink single malt whiskey, yes. I believe. Yeah. And I was like, this is sort of curious that this is the second occasion where a magical beast requires. Um, alcohol. alcohol as yeah. part of its sustenance, which I was like, I wonder if that's more common across the board. And and it's like, like I I want to know if like inside of other mythology outside of even like just the Harry Potter lore itself, if this might be a thing that might possibly be believed. Um, that like part of like what makes these bees so dangerous is that they drink alcohol or something. Oh right, like, like that, yeah, you know? like they need alcohol, but of course they're drinking tons of it, so they're just sort of like a little wild. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like <clears throat> maybe maybe that's supposed to contribute to the like the lack of predictability of of what these things are. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm not. I'm not totally sure though. But I, I did. I that stood out to me. I literally underlined bucket of brandy and just wrote um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I love that. This is like a brand new. And also, like you're supposed to feed them that. But like in the wild, how would like mother dragons be providing that to their young? Oh, I know. Yeah. I mean, it, it must assume in some some capacity that whatever or however mother dragons feed their baby dragons, uh, the solution is. Um, like from a nutritional standpoint, similar to these ingredients. Got it. Dragon's milk is alcoholic. Got it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you read between the lines. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it. You nailed it. Anyway. So as we turn the next page though, um, there's, there's a, another little interesting tidbit, which is that Hagrid has basically gone from hiding the dragon from anybody to actively sending Harry a note that says it's hatching. Yeah. So he's sort of like, well, as long as you know, I'd love for you to be a part of this yeah, special day. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Get down there. Go and go and be involved. Of course, naturally, as they're talking about going down there, Malfoy's only a few feet away and it's stopped dead to listen because he has nothing better to do. Come on. Ever. Malfoy, I literally what? just wrote, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I can do cut, man. Go do something else. You gotta get like a hobby or something. Um then oh there's this like they they talk about how they're going to go see it and they're arguing about whether or not they're going to go see it and ev eventually they agree that they'll go down to Hagrid's during morning break and it's like it's such an obvious solution I'm not, I'm not sure why they ever had to argue about it yeah right right, <laughs> yeah. right right yeah it's like the big question is it's like well are we going to go now and miss class or or could we go immediately after during morning break yeah it's like, like Morning, morning break, break should yeah. be fine. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come they, on, guys. They they make it in time. I do love the description of a freshly hatched Norwegian road like a bag. like a crumpled black umbrella. A crumpled black umbrella. It's like I don't know. I don't know why, but I'm like, yeah, I yeah. can see that. It says, I guess the wings are so spiny, but I like that the the word umbrella is used because that's also like Hagrid's wand. That's and true. And it's like Hagrid's dragon. It kind of feels like yeah, that works. That make that kind of makes his wand a little more dragony. How how would you describe ha describe Hagrid? He's kind of kind of like umbrella ish. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know umbrellas. He's like Hagrid. Oh, that's Hagrid. Yeah. They're one of the it. same. <coughs> yep. Um, and then when the little little baby Norbert sneezes, a couple of sparks flew out of its mm -hmm. snout. So it's it's a little bit adorable at first, which Hagrid immediately picks up on and says, isn't he beautiful? Oh, I love how it is eventually revealed that Norbert is a female dragon and that Hagrid has this book and doesn't like immediately like check whether it's male or female. I, I, it's another one of those moments where it's like you want to be giving Hagrid the benefit of the doubt, like that he knows what he's talking about when it comes to to magical beasts. And it, it feels like it's kind of like a touch and go type of thing. Like like sometimes it seems like he's like dead on the mark and he knows like a ton of information. Yeah. And then others, it's sort of like. Hagrid, how do you miss that? Yeah. You know, that, on, that, one, that one feels like it should be should be within your right. range. Yep. Although, I guess to be fair, nobody's supposed to have bred one for 300 years. I guess so. so I guess so. There's, there's that. Naturally, not seconds after the dragon has been hatched, Mal they noticed that Malfoy had seen the dragon through the window because, again, he has nothing better to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like, it's just convenient that he didn't have class during morning break, and he's like, you know, I'm going to spend my morning break. I'm going to head down to Hagrid's to see whether or not that Potter kid's down there doing something something for something, something, something. How many things throughout the year did Malfoy go in at eavesdrop where nothing interesting was said? I, I know, exactly. You like, know, it's just yeah, like, when we get this, like, uh, this uh, supposed Harry Potter TV show that's coming out for where they're just redoing the books, but as a TV show, there needs to be, like, just a subplot where Malfoy's just, like, hiding behind stuff all the time. Yes, 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 <laughs> like, yes. Huh? You guys talking about something? Like, like his, uh, his overall objective, like, uh, if you get to follow just Draco's character, like, in, like independent from everybody, 
It almost needs to be the case that for some reason Draco has extreme motivation to be like like riding their tail always. Yeah, you know. So he's just it's 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 almost just sort of like, hey, are you going to potions? It's like, nah, Potter's going to be in defense against the dark arts, so I'll probably just stand at the door and listen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I gotta, you know, I'm I'm always eavesdropping, always collecting information. You never know when something's going to come in handy. Right. 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 And yeah. it's certainly not going to happen in class. <laughs> handy it's for what, Draco? No what. Yeah. <laughs> Right. What are you trying to accomplish here? <laughs> what are you here? doing? Yeah. Anyway, that's all right. Uh, um, but so... Uh, also, then, not only does Malfoy see it, he does not do anything about it. Like, there's this like, oh, like he's got him. You know, he's got him. Right, he's yeah. There, he's got the information. Like, he does nothing with it. He doesn't even tell Lucius about it, you know? Yep, yep. No, yeah. I know. I, and that was literally like rereading this. It was sort of like, I, I'm like literally forgetting about the whole scene in the hospital wing where, where Draco goes up to like taunt you know, yeah, Ron, Ron. And, and ends up getting his book uh, with all the necessary vital bits to, to figure out how to, you know, um, go and find them in the middle of the night, which again, earlier in this exact same book, there is the midnight duel. Like, like he was supposed to confront them in the middle of the night once already and didn't. And right. this time, this time he's, he's apparently all about it. He's like, I'm not, I'm not missing my chance again. Exactly. Yeah. This time I'm actually going to go like, instead of tipping someone off that they're going to be there like he did last time, he's like, I need to personally oversee, but like, what's he going to do? Like just be out there and catch them, but then he'll also be out of bed, which is exactly what happens. Yeah. You know, like he'd be better off just tipping someone off. He again. Abs- again, yeah, doing the yeah, exact like, same play. Just try the same plan. Which, but. which on some level feels like maybe because McGonagall is the one who catches him, right? You know, so it does. It <laughs> one does. of the rare times she's just out of bed in the middle of the, night. the corridors. Right, yeah, right. Which must be a duty. It, it has to be a duty. Yeah, that, like, like it must just like you're weak. Yeah. To, to, to be out there making sure that everybody's being up to the right amount of good. Um, let's see here. So then then you start to run into the issue of um, what do we do? And once again, we get a lot more Charlie than we tend to get for the rest of the series where Ron basically comes up with the idea like, you know, hey, maybe maybe Charlie can take this dragon. Like how how hard could that be? And I, I do feel like uh, Hagrid agreeing to this feels slightly out of character for Hagrid. Like he he's almost immediately like, OK, if we have to, you yeah, know? and it's it's like, <laughs> I, I I don't know, I don't I don't know why. I mean, it just it seems like maybe he could have just like you know fought back a little bit harder or whatever. So then they end up you know <coughs> writing Charlie uh, a letter um, where they get back, and, and I actually really like the letter from Charlie. It yeah. feels just so like cordial and maybe slightly out of character amongst the rest of like the Weasley brothers. Yeah. Where it's just like, dear Ron, how are you? Thanks for the letter. I'd be glad to take the Norwegian bridge back. Yeah, like, l- let me help you present a plan right back to me as soon as possible. Love Charlie. Right. Like, and I was like, what a good brother. I was like, wow. Charlie seems like a good dude. I know because they're like pretty far apart, like age wise. So this must it's just like very much like getting it from your your much younger brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, oh, I'll help you out of a jam, little bro. I can do that. I can do that. Look at this, guys. Yeah, uh, I agree. I, like his request, I do. It does, like also so much of it re- like just relies on trust because like Charlie's basically going to have to start like arranging this before he even gets the the send back it seems like you know it's like can you get them up to the tallest tower at midnight on saturday it's like okay i guess we'll send the letter back and just hope that you get it and see you there <laughs> right you right know? right yes yeah no it definitely seems like i mean and this is i mean the, uh, it always reminds me of like pre-cell phone days so it's yeah. which i mean i remember like we lived in that era like we didn't grow up like as like little kids with our parents having cell phones or anything yeah uh not necessarily at least and so i mean it it is like a different kind of communication if you were to even go back to like pre telephones where you couldn't even be like, hey, okay, meet at six, meet at six. Okay, good, good, good. See you then. Like, yeah. This is like placing a letter in the mail, sending it to them. They receive it like about a week later where they respond and agree to meet you at six o'clock on like the 21st. Right. It's like, it's like there's such little follow up. Like I, right. I feel like before I leave my house to go meet somebody for dinner plans at six, I'll usually send them a text at like 5.15 and be like, hey, we still on for six? Like, I feel like, yeah. And it's like one of those things where it's like, does the fact that we are able to communicate so much more directly all of the time mean that you should follow up so much more like because the opportunity like you're right like if if I said okay we're going to meet at six on Saturday and then we just left work and like that was the next time we were going to see each other and weren't going to communicate like 
if you had no way to get in touch with me, you just have to show up. You would just have to show up. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Your, your, your commitment to being there yeah. seems is, much more. Is much like, greater. Yes, Whereas like yes. you can commit to six o'clock on Saturday now and just know that like, you know, if something comes up, so I'll just like cancel because I can just text them like as, as, as late as like 15 minutes ahead of time. Yeah. You'd be like, hey, I'm not going to be able yeah. to make it. It's like, you're oh, like, OK. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. like that would seem perfectly adequate. But you're right. Yeah. So they have to really rely on a lot of trust. I really I, this is I was reading and I'm like, it, it is like such a missed opportunity to just meet Charlie in this chapter. True. Like, you know, he sends the letter back, but like he isn't coming just as friends are. It's like, why? Why does Charlie? Why? Like, why? Why the decision not to have Charlie be there? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't yeah. have a good answer for that. You, yeah, you're I know. It's just right. Like, it does feel like it, it does feel like it, it also just doesn't seem like it needs to be on the tallest tower. Like, yeah. It's like, uh, actually, we're just going to keep it at Hagrid's hut. He's really big. You know about dragons, right? You study them. You study them. Do you think, um, is there anything even to, like that we would need to question about the fact that like Charlie's friends are just simply able to fly right up to Hogwarts? Oh, I thought about that. Like, they, like, I mean, because. Well, so I was thinking about in Prisoner of Azkaban where it's like, oh, yeah, getting to Hogwarts very difficult. Yes. But like in that case, they do have the Dementor. So I don't think in like you could just fly up during year three or something without the Dementors basically yeah. sensing and then in per- pursuing. Yeah, them. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even in this book, like Voldemort has just entered the castle just pfft, by walking in basically. No, I know. know I know. It, it, this is like it's basically like everything Draco goes through in Half-Blood Prince in order to be able to like gain access. It's like it just doesn't seem like it would have been that difficult well by the time we get to half blood prince though like voldemort is known to be back so the I, security is a lot higher a lot higher that's a good point yeah that's a good point okay okay yeah, that was that was one of the things where i was like could you just fly and, I, and then i was like i don't really see what would stop you from simply flying right up to it yeah but like uh, so half blood prince again when harry and dumbledore are going up to see the dark mark like dumbledore is like murmuring a bunch of spells and like undoing a bunch of protective enchantments around the castle so that they can fly so to it can, that's a good point yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so it must be the case that those enchantments are new by the time half blood prince rolls yeah around. So maybe maybe so. security is a little bit like more relaxed g- given the fact that it's been in decades since voldemort's Falling. Yeah. There's just not not quite the same level. Of right. Okay. I can live with that. Okay. That's not a problem. Um, but yeah, so then uh I think pretty much from there we've got um let's see. Yeah, this is where Ron goes down and gets his hand bitten because he's not wearing gloves. Yep. Uh helping Hagrid feed Norbert crates of rats, I guess. Uh so that he can get sent to the hospital wing so that Malfoy and Co. can come like just laugh at him, basically. Again, it's like I'm just imagining Draco in the common room being like, I'm going to the hospital wing. I'm gonna go gonna go have a laugh at Weasley. You wanna come? Like right. no, no, Draco, we don't. We're trying to make pineapples tap dance. We're not gonna make it a second year. <laughs> 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 I, bet, I bet yours is just doing ballet at this point. I know. Yeah, come on. You're just so far ahead that you have time to do this. The big question here, though, is sort of like, does Madame Pomfrey, like, I almost wonder if she just excludes herself from the the politics of the school hard stop. Like, yeah. her goal, her objective is to look after the students regardless of what happens, regardless of what shows up. It's a magical school. Calamities can happen. I'm not here to ask questions about why. Because we know that, like, uh, Harry, Ron, and Hermione in the next book are illegally brewing Polyjuice Potion, and that right. it seems like Hermione is able to go and be treated by Madame Pomfrey. And, like, uh, like it, it doesn't seem like that ends up coming up as like a big issue. Like, like, like she was like, what happened to you? Turned into a cat. Yep, come with me. <laughs> we, we'll solve it. We'll figure it we'll out. We'll figure that so, out. So, you know, like in, in this instance, I think uh, Ron lies and says that uh, a dog bit his hand, but it doesn't. he doesn't think that Madame Pomfrey believes him, him. Um, which, you know, what we come to know about Madame Pomfrey, almost certainly she knows that this is no... Yeah, so, not like a dog bite. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, it's I like, think, I think, I bet from her point of view, it's like clearly something you don't want to tell me happened to your hand. That's fine. The important thing is we need to heal it because whatever you did, I still don't want you to die. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so we, we need to treat it. We'll just leave it there because at that point in time, it's like, you know, like Madame Pomfrey could just be the reason that they get in trouble. Like we don't need to have necessarily the next passage delving into right like like them actually being caught. Right. It does seem like may, it, yeah, like they wonder whether or not she can recognize a dragon's bite. And I almost have to think she can't because it does seem like dragon would cross the line of like, yeah, we need to 
tell Dumbledore about this. Unless she <clears> does <throat> go and tell Dumbledore. And once again, I mean, oh, there's, true. There's, you know, like Dumbledore just knows everything that goes on within the school. He's so like, it's just oh, like, oh, I know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. who do you think gave the idea for Quirrell to go and bet the egg? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was me. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> now, Quirrell, just light conversation <clears throat> here over, over breakfast and crumpets. You don't by chance <clears throat> have any like dangerous magical beast artifacts lying around, do you? Because if you don't, not, yeah. I might have an egg that I can loan you. You. If you're feeling like going gambling, and tonight. if you if you ask me, I bet Hagrid would tell you almost anything to get this dragon's egg. Yes, this seems yeah. like classic Dumbledore. Classic behavior. Dumbledore. Yeah, yeah. Um, got to make sure Harry gets there eventually somehow, right? Yeah, um, I, I want to say there's like actually maybe like a neat connection here um, because we know that Quirrell is good with trolls. Like that, that is his bit of hocus pocus, and he's the one who let the troll in. Right. And I want to say that in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, like the the guidebook, when you get to the section on trolls, like there is like the mountain trolls are like from Norway okay. or something. So like it stands to reason that like like that's why he has a Norwegian ridgeback is because that's where the trolls are too. That is sort of cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like maybe he spent a lot of time in that part of the world and right. like encountered these. I like that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I was like, ooh, that, that's pretty cool. That's that a is, good one. That is super yeah. cool. That is super cool. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, we're, we're sort of at the end of the chapter though. So they 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 somehow, they don't even know how, managed to get the crate to the, the tallest <laughs> tower somehow. in the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> no but, help from Hagrid. <laughs> who's <laughs> totally willing to let them take the fall for this. Right. Upon arrival, we get to witness Matt Malfoy getting detention, which feels a little bit like karmic justice, where you're just sort of like, thank goodness that like he finally gets in trouble mm-hmm. for something yeah. uh, somewhere along the way. And you're like, okay, how about this? I mean, they have the invisibility cloak. They're all good. They're able to successfully pass off uh, Norbert. Norbert's like going, going, gone. We're, we're all good. And then Hermione and Harry go down the stairs without the invisibility without cloak. Without the cloak? Like, are you kidding me, guys? The number of times that Harry ends up parting with just like his necessary artifacts, like yeah. the cloak, the Marauder's Map, whatever. It's just like, it's like, ah, dude, no, take better care of your stuff. No, got to keep an eye on it. It's like yeah. you've had, you have had one like extremely valuable possession your whole life and you just left it. I'm also thinking about how this ultimately goes down because what's going to happen is that McGonagall is going to catch them and give them, well, Filch catches them, I guess. He's going to bring them to McGonagall who's going to give them detention and it it just a thousand percent seems like they're like, like Hagrid could just say like, actually, I had a dragon. They were helping me get rid of it. Instead, what happens is Hagrid is like, yep, I guess you got detention and I'll be the one carrying it out. <laughs> You right, know, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Remember I when I got a dragon and you got in trouble? Great. Now I will be punishing you personally. Right. Yeah. We're going to go into a very dark <laughs> and dangerous forest that includes the Dark Lord that gave you the scar and killed your parents. Sound good? Sound good. Sound good. He's like, I've never known anything to kill a unicorn ever. They're way too fast. It must be insanely dangerous. Let's go. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. So anyway, that was chapter 14 for uh, you folks. Chapter 14. It's it, a wild ride. It's a wild ride. It's kind of hilarious. It's it's one of those I mean, it's left out of the film. Um, you know, Norbert obviously is in there a little bit, but we don't get the entire like exchange and, and the return to, you know, to Charlie and stuff like that, which yeah. I think on the whole just sort of is is easy enough to to live without. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a fun saga and it, and it's cool to like get more of like the relationship and the way that like the golden trio interacts with Hagrid and mm-hmm. you know the rest of that type of thing but it definitely it definitely feels like a lot a lot a lot you know from like an outlining the story standpoint I can't help but feel like this whole chapter is here for the purposes of getting them the, the detention so yeah they end up in the forbidden forest basically like to get more information yeah because we are we are closing in I we're closing on, in on the end of the we've story. got three chapters left I know. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So next week we're going to be diving into chapter fifteen, the Forbidden Forest. Yeah, which should be just uh, just another hoot and holler and good time as per always. JD, mm-hmm. have a review for us. Uh, I think I could uh, rustle up a review for us here. Let's take a, take ourselves a little quick peek ski. All right, this is from uh, man. I don't know why the the reviews on Apple always just like fudge up whatever the person's name is, but it's from UJBHHJN. Wow, <laughs> <a good> username. <laughs> I know, great one. 
It just says, hey, brother, love your podcast. It is amazing. I listen to, listen to it every day. I love the way you deep dive the story. I have a great theory idea. What if Draco was in Gryffindor? I know it's not very likely, but it is an interesting scenario. Ooh. So there you go. What do you think? What if Draco was in Gryffindor? Is he like nicer? Is he friends with Harry? Okay, so I feel like, I mean, it, it seems to me like the thing you would need almost right off the bat is for Draco to sort of take on a rather serious black sort of like perspective. Yeah, like demeanor. Things. Like it almost means he's like anti his parents or something. It, it feels like he'd be anti his parents. We know from like the deep dives on Pottermore and the archives and stuff like that that Malfoy has been told, or Draco Malfoy for that matter, has been told for most of his life that Harry could be the second coming of the Dark Lord and that this. This could be somebody that that's true we could rally behind so i could see a world where draco basically like calls an audible up on site where he discovers like harry's not going to go for slither and it's like i'm gonna like if i'm gonna be able to like get this guy on our side yeah like, i'm gonna need to go into gryffindor oh oh, oh. you know yeah. like and and so basically i could almost see it being a situation where like Draco then goes on to be the sort of like counterproductive member of Harry's own house. Um, maybe I'm like, you like in a Peter Pettigrew esque type role, maybe in a Peter Pettigrew esque role, but like, I mean, Draco's more competent than Peter. Um, yeah, you know, as, as far so. as, you know, all things, all things being equal, I, I could see a world where like maybe the first half of the series, what you're getting is a man on the inside. Who's trying to like kind of foil Harry's plans or, or maybe like throughout the series, like we don't know how they keep getting caught or, or something. And then you, you come to discover that it's been Draco, like pulling the curtain out. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, like he's, he's the informant, but nobody's expecting somebody from their own dormitory. Right. But that would make him extremely privy to I, as much information as he clearly wants. Right. I think, yeah, I suspect that early on he still tries to like upend Harry's success, but like being exposed to them so frequently and so often and like being united under the banner of Gryffindor, he like, I can imagine a scenario where like they get in the tension in the woods here and it's like, like Harry still helps him out of a jam yeah. and it's like, oh wait, he actually still helped me even though I've been working against him this whole time. Is that wait what just happened right right right. Yeah. so I, I like the idea that the reason that draco goes into gryffindor in the first place is specifically like because he's attempting to get something out of Harry. <laughs> that's like, just like, still the most slithered move ever though it is. no and it of course is yeah i mean it's extremely nefarious um but it's i like the idea that what this would do is almost like provide somebody who could be like counter to the golden trio's objectives from inside of their own camp but then with time and exposure draco ultimately slowly works his way around and maybe by the end of like goblet starts to actually like be more of like an ally yeah so yeah i mean imagine if harry gets chosen as champion while draco's in gryffindor is he still like cedric diggory the real champion you know oh, right right right. like the rest right. of the gryffindor is gonna like, shove him in a locker excuse me yeah, yeah. Time flat. shove him in a locker <laughs> 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 I've never imagined lockers at Hogwarts. No, they're not. They're they just, just find one. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Fred and George just like summon one. Yeah, so they can like, stuff lock, them in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jeez, man. Um, no, but yeah. that, that that would be, that's my personal thought. Oh, would that's he be on the Quidditch team? Oh. Yeah, I think so. I think he probably would. I think be. he still I, is. I think Draco actually is quite good at Quidditch. I think you're right. I think I think he's the, I mean, he's the, the seeker for Slytherin because he's like, he has to be seeker because Harry's the seeker. But like, right. I think he could probably play any, he'd probably just be chaser is my guess. Yeah, very like a Ginny-esque kind of character that can sort of do it all yeah sort of do it all yeah, you know exactly. yeah just okay. out there yeah i like that i like that yeah but it, but not till second year i still yeah. think harry not till it. second year and i have to imagine that right that i have to imagine lucius is like okay the the whole point of doing this is so that draco gets to be as special as harry so instead of buying the entire team he probably no. just gives draco the nimbus 2001 I, I thought you were gonna say gives everybody the 2001 except for oh, harry. yeah no no, no 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 not gonna do that either so it's, told, that's two on the nose uh, even oliver would <laughs> have to be kind of like this is pretty sweet yeah i know like, yeah well, how does oliver handle that like well um, no, oliver, oliver takes every advantage he can get yeah yeah right 100%. yeah yeah no if he's given the nimbus 2000 ones he's using them for yeah sure. yeah for sure yeah he can be bought right he can be bought he has a price i like it i like it oh man anyway guys as ever like we said uh super excited for next week's chapter 15 the forbidden forest yes join us next time through the gryffindor zero sugar zero calories